Now, what? One, two, three, four, ten. Can you hear me, everyone? Okay, guys. So it's great to be here. I would like to thank everyone for like organizing this conference. It's a really cool one. And it's also an honor to be here as a Wafer representative because we helped to found this uh, to sponsor this conference. Today, I want to talk about something very special to me. It's, it's like PHP plus business equals money. Why is that right? I want to talk about how we use PHP in Wayfair and how, we, uh, how PHP helps us generate like billions of dollars of revenue and why is that? Why PHP attracts doers, like people who actually use PHP to fix the business problems. So to, I will go like through my slides and tell you a story about myself in the past, how we fix it, what's possible, what possibilities do we have to prevent the issues from the story, and then what we do in Wayfair, what's our secret ingredient to actually drive our business in such a good numbers. So I'm Martin, it's good to see you all here, let's start. So just a few things about Wayfair first, we will get back to it later in the story and I just want to share the numbers with you so you know why I'm talking about this even though it might sound sometimes a little bit weird, right? So Wayfair was founded in 2002. We were rack and stand back then. We sent racks and stands. That was all we were doing. And we were adding more and more stores to it. So by the year 2011, we had to more than 200 stores. Then something changed. We realized this doesn't work anymore, and we had to change it. So when customer went from one side to another, they didn't know it's us. So they had a good impression of one side, they didn't know what to ex expect from the other side. That was one issue. There was a second issue. When you send a rack and stands, together with that, you can sell other stuff too. So the people, when they visited the site, we wanted them to actually be able to buy the other stuff, like what Amazon does, for example, right? They, they have all these like, related products. And there was a third reason. Do you know what might be the third reason? It's a good one. So the Google search engine changed the rules, right? Be be but at this time, the domain name, it played a big role, but that changed. So the rack and stands didn't run the first one in the search results anymore. So we changed, we created Wayfair, and ever since that, we scaled like crazy. And what I mean by scaling is these numbers. So in last quarter, we had more than 9 million active customers, and we had one more revenue than 1 billion in just last quarter. La annually, last year, we made more than $3 billion. And right now, what I mean by PHP at scale, we have more than, than 1,000 engineers working on PHP code every day. I find that amazing. I, I wouldn't believe that before I joined Wayfair. And it all runs mostly on PHP. This is just amazing. For me, it was a new thing. So that's about Wayfair. Now I want to share a story from my life with you. It's a little bit different story in a smaller company. And what we were doing, we were selling digital magazines. So you have a magazine. And we digitalize that, and you can read the same thing on tablet, mobile, your computer. Great idea, it worked out. We were the biggest one in Czech Republic. But we needed to improve our numbers. And somebody came with a great idea. We have this platform, it already works. Let's add the friends to it. You can invite friends, right? It's easy, like one, one guy will invite two other friends, and they will invite two friends. And this was amazing. We could see the exponential growth, right? Like two, four, eight, 16. Next month, we will make millions. So we, there was an expectation of a huge business. Like I was looking so forward to finish this. It was so cool project. I was looking like the company is going to grow like crazy. We will have a lot of money, right? We will have everything. And this, this is what dr draw us all the time. So we moved to development. And it was a great idea. And we were doing a correct development. So by, back then, we were switching to Symfony. We were switching to Doctrine. We were running test-driven development. We were doing a lot of cool stuff. I liked all of that. And it helped us to drive a lot of things. But it took us a like, little bit longer, maybe. But it was cool. Like, we used a, lo a lot of cool new stuff. We did everything correctly, I would say, from business and from engineering perspective. And we were looking forward to deploy everything. Everyone was really enthusiastic about this project. So we were looking forward to it, right? But what happened next? It was a fail. We deployed. Didn't work out. Like, we thought like, there would be a million registrations. Nothing happened. But then the second day, it improved. Suddenly, there were thousands of registrations. Back then, we had like a few thousand customers and a thousand registrations. That was amazing. So we, we were like, OK, it's working, right? It's fine. Then the second day, there was about 5,000 registrations. Like, hey, exponential growth. That's awesome. Then we realized only one guy was actually inviting all the other people. He was creating a fake email addresses. He registered them on Facebook. Then he signed them up, and he got money for that. 
We didn't get anything. There was just one guy using the system. So there was no revenue from that. Actually, we lost money because that guy, he was using the system, and we had to pay it to all our, our suppliers of the magazines, right? So suddenly, it turned around, and do you know what is worst? We found out customers hate us for this. They went to our platform to read the magazines, not to invite friends. And suddenly, they, they hated us, right? So we were in this situation when we finally deployed what we thought is best. It looked all good. It was awesome. And we didn't make any money. And the customers hated us in the end. That was really annoying. But the, the, everything we implemented was extensible, right? That's what we did. And it was all new and shiny. That's important. So why did we fail, right? What was wrong in this case? The business idea was awesome. Like friends, invite friends. That's awesome, right? And we implemented it correctly. What was wrong in this story? Is it the great idea like was wrong? Was it wrong? Like for other companies, it works. Why didn't it work for us? Or is that the expectation of the business impact was too large? Maybe the friend platforms make sense, right? But somebody will just invite the brand friend, somebody won't. Maybe there is some potential in that. Or maybe it took too long to develop this stuff, right? It took us 90 days to develop it. Maybe that was fast. Maybe to other team, it would take 300 days. Who knows? We were slow. That's the real problem. We were slow. We were slow to validate the idea. Because look at this. Why is that problem, right? Why is it a problem to be slow? Do you see this guy, this one? That is us, right? That was the symphony. This is us when we tied, tied other idea. Here we built some UI because we needed messages, notifications, and all that stuff. And we were running here. But what is the problem with this? This guy is doing quite well. You, you, did you see that role? That was amazing, right? He could just get back and move on. What is the wrong, what's wrong on this one? Do you see the other guys? That's our competition, right? They didn't have those issues. They just move on. They passed us. That was what's wrong, right? It took us longer to do it than it took our competition. That was a big problem for us, suddenly. So how do we get faster? That's what we try to do, right? We want to get faster all the time. That's why we learn the new stuff. How can we get faster? So there are a few things we could have done differently. So could we validate the idea? without actually engineering it. When we set a friends platform, the idea was like one friend can invite other friends, right? Could we actually reach out to customers and send like, hey, can you send an email to your friend? And we will give you money if you will do so. That would take like five minutes, right? That's a little bit faster to validate it. Or could we implement it in one day with hard-coded ugly hack? Could we do just like, hey, no, don't care, boy. We will do this one PHP file. We will implement it, and then we will fix it right after. Could we have done that? Maybe. Or we could have done a small change in the future, right? Like we deployed it, and we could change something to bring the value back, maybe also. And the biggest, pro like the big problem here was also like, could we quickly switch it on and off? Because we deployed it, right? Everyone was really happy about deploying it. Then it didn't work out, and it was everywhere in the system. So we had the notifications, we had the friends platform. It was sending automatic emails to people to invite friends, and. He couldn't switch it off. And suddenly, when we said, like, hey, yeah, switching it off will take another 10 days, nobody wanted to hear that. Like, the business people were like, no, we are losing money. Now we have to move on something else. But we had to turn it off. So that was another problem. And could we iterate and validate before it's fully finished? Was that possible? Like, could we do, like, a smaller piece, deploy that, and then move on? And I want to stop at this one. You probably saw this picture already. It's Mona Lisa. So there are two ways how to implement her, <laughs> right? There's an incremental way, and that's what we did. So we took a step and step by step, and we knew that this is the final result we wanted, and we wanted to get there as soon as possible. We tried everything, and we did the small piece and the, another small piece. But it didn't work out. Like, we couldn't try it immediately, right? We had to wait until we have the full product. And only when we had the full product, we could say, hey, do you like Mona Lisa? No, I don't like it. I want the landscape. That was the problem, right? So if we would do it iteratively, we could say, hey, it, it's going to be a girl. And we would have something immediately. And we could have done that in that story. We could have said, like, OK, we won't have an invite via, e via Facebook, because that takes a lot of time. We won't have OAuth. We won't have notifications. We won't have automatic emailing. We will have just one stupid form that invites a friend. And you will enter an email there, and that will be it. That would be enough, right? If somebody signs up, you get the money. Would be enough. So we could solve our issues much faster. And it would take us just a few days, maybe a day, to find out this idea is not so good. And then we would have 89 days to implement something that could have moved our business forward. That's a big thing. So 
the biggest thing here is that you get a lot of feedback from it. And you should get. So if you have a feedback, you can move faster. Because when you release early, you can then iterate. And based on the feedback, you can make better decisions. You know, hey, the customers like this. The customers that didn't like it. Maybe only customers that are younger than 20, 20 years liked it. And suddenly, you can iterate on that. But without having the feedback, you have nothing to validate your ideas on, right? You have to wait until you finish the whole thing. And only then, you get the feedback. And either it's good or bad, but if the next iteration takes another 90 days, that's just too long. So you have to iterate really fast. And any idea might be wrong. That's the reason why. Any good idea might be actually wrong idea. You never know. And what's worst? You might have a good idea. It works, and it might not work tomorrow. That's the annoying part. And that's why I started with Wayfair and with a few other companies. The Airbnb, Facebook, Wayfair, they, they didn't start exactly as what they are right now. They start as something different, and they evolved over the time. They iterated, right? So they added to it by piece by piece, and they have to change. They, they have to change every day. That's super important. So that's one of our secret ingredients we are trying to achieve. It's a speed to market. We are trying to build small things. We are trying to do it in, uh, iteratively. And we try to validate as fast as possible to move on. There's a second thing that helps us a lot. So at Wayfair, we try to stay pragmatic. That's easy to say, right? Like, be pragmatic. That's not so easy to do, because there are a lot of dogmas around. And what I mean by dogmas is that there's a lot of big companies. People are watching them all the time. There's a Google, Netflix. The thing is, the Google is not Netflix, as Netflix is not Facebook. And Facebook is not Slack. Everyone has different needs, right? They, they all have different businesses. And for one, microservices might be a perfect solution. For the other one, it might be the complete opposite. And what is important, like Wayfair is a special company. We, we, are, we have our own business. So we focus on business. That's what we do. We try to focus on business, and that's all we do. So we iterate fast, then we validate assumptions, and then we clean later. Because if we don't clean later, there might be nothing left to clean, actually. So the thing is that our code supports billions of dollars business by now. And we have humans. This is an important thing. For Wayfair, we have humans. And humans break stuff every day. There's nothing we can do with that. That's the assumption we have to keep. Humans are human beings, and we sometimes make mistakes. But we still do dozen deployments and hundreds of changes a day, which is fine. We know. We, we expect this to happen. So staying pragmatic is hard, as I said. There's no easy recipe. There are things you can do that help you. So you have to stay focused on your business. And your business means what you deliver to your customer, to your stakeholders, not how you deliver it. They are not interested in your technical solutions. They are interested in what, what solutions you provided to them, right? What problems do you, you solve to them, for them? So what helps me and us is we validate pros and cons, and we always validate rewards and risk, and we try to iterate on these. What I mean by that, if we go to pros and cons, we, can, we, we have a few things that we, we can check, right? We can always check, like, hey, the known areas, they are actually pros. They are always pros. If you know a uh, language has a bug, it's a good thing, because you know about it. And the unknown areas, they are always the cons. Like, you know, it might work like this. It should work like this. I'm sure it should work like this. It's a big con. Like, you never know what you might end up with. You might, after months of development, you might like, and maybe it should not, right? You might find that. And also, like, how many people are experienced with the technology? That's super important. Will you find an expert that has the experience? In PHP, you will find an expert who has 22 years of experience. Will you find that in a fresh new language? Probably not. So you have to keep that in mind. And how stable the technology is? Some technology is moving fast. And there is a new framework, then there's another new framework, or there is a new version that breaks the APIs. So keep that in mind. And I want to show you some of our pros and cons. And they are important. I'm not going to go over all of them. There is too much of them. And there will be even more. But it's just <laughs> to start a discussion. So in, PA, in Wayfair, we are using mainly PHP. And the reason is that, that PHP attracts people who are doers. I mean, PHP, when you start with it, usually you, you just pick this website, you change one small thing, and it works, right? You wouldn't do that in Java. I couldn't just go to SAP and say, hey, I will just change this. But in PHP, you get to WordPress, you go to a lot of other websites, you change one more thing, and you deliver the business. And that's how mo most of the people I know, they got to PHP in the first place. That's awesome. It attracts people who solve business problems. And it's a major language. There, suddenly, there's a lot of these engineers. You can get thousands of them. 
There's a huge community. There is a huge community on, on, package, on GitHub, on packages, right? And you have uh, amazing tooling. We have to thank a lot of companies for doing that for us. And it has known bugs. This is interesting, right? We know like there are these dark corners in PHP that we are not proud of. Like, I don't know if it's a parameter, uh, parameter if this is like the, the, uh, the haystack and the needle and so on. We know about these issues, but they are not big. And the another thing is it allows fast changes. Th that's what I said, right? You can just change the file, you refresh. It's so easy to set up. Everyone can start with it. And it allows it, you to, to move fast. So also, it's super fast for the new projects. And what's also crazy, it's crazy scalable. It was built to scale. It's actually built to die, which is perfect for scaling. You don't have those issues. You can even run like thousands of applications on the single server. That's just amazing feature. There are also some cons, right? So one con for engineers these days is PHP is not sexy anymore. As I said, 22 years old, it's not sexy. It doesn't attract like, hey, I do Golang, I do Rust, I do all that stuff. It's not sexy anymore. But that's why business loves it, right? They love it because it's not sexy anymore. There are people who actually deliver business. And it's also a little bit slower. For us, it's not a big con because usually the database or the IO operations, they are much slower than PHP. So it doesn't slow us down in our business. So then, this one is special. We love our monolith. So we have a monolith application with 1,000 engineers, right? And we have more than 10 million lines of code of PHP in that monolith. And we still love it. There are pros and cons to it, as to everything. And for us, the biggest pro here, it makes simple reviews. So we have multiple applications. We need to change something in all of them because we are changing the whole process. It's one review. We can review everything in single, single review. That's an amazing feature. It helps us a lot. And we have a synchronized deployment to all the applications. So suddenly we can deploy everything to different applications in just one deployment. That's also a big feature for us, mainly when we change a lot of things. Because we don't have to deal with versioning of all those applications, and if that application works with that application in specific version. But there are cons to it, as always. So as I'm saying, this is why it works for us. There are also cons for that, right? So it's harder to understand what is where. Sometimes there's just mess like, hey, there's this file inside one shared code, or somebody tries to call in one thing from the other application. So there might be a mess in that. And there is a deployment in, in interference, right? One failing application might cause that the other application is not deployed either, which might be a good thing and a bad thing. So, and there's one more. This one is really special. So when I joined Wayfair, in all the companies before, I built reports. I built financial reports. I built uh, all sorts of reports, how the stuff moved, how many things we sold, so on. And in these reports, we every time included like at least five people because we didn't understand what we need to report like and how the law works and all that stuff. I didn't build a single report in Wayfair. I'm just amazed by that. Just imagine like company this big and I didn't build a report. Why is that? So in Wayfair, we actually require all the business people to know SQL, which basically means they build their reports themselves. And if they need help, they can go to us. We help with, with some more advanced stuff. But they already prepared everything. This is so amazing. This helps us to move so fast. Just imagine a business person goes to you, and they are like, hey, how many things we sold last year for this customer and that customer, and how much text that is? And you say, like, no, we, we will finish the sprint in two weeks, so wait two weeks, then we will file it up, and then we will talk, and we will do it. And in first iteration, you will get it wrong, because nobody understands that. And suddenly, in this case, he goes to you and says, like, OK, I already know the numbers. That's fine. Like, what can we do about them? And suddenly, you move in day one. That's amazing, really. Like, how much time we spare on this one? It's amazing. So and they can monitor all variety of stuff. They have KPIs, all that stuff. And yeah, we have data accessible in one place. We have multiple databases, but still, it's all SQL. So it's awesome for the business. It has its cons as well for engineers you suddenly have a lot of coupling, right? Like there's a lot of coupling, and you cannot change that because the business, they depend on it. They know, hey, there's this column. I always use it. Where's my column? Or sometimes, sometimes we have non-normalized data because they need it for business. But I think what needs business is much important than what engineers need in this case. So this is what I would get out of this, what I want you to get out of it. Always focus on your business problems first. Right? And not only on your technical problems. Because it's important to deliver the business solution. It's always important. The code doesn't pl uh, play any role here. It's just to support the business to move faster. That's what you need to do. And with all this, 
we moved from light speed to ridiculous speed all the way to ridiculous speed, right? That's what we did. And yeah, that's me, Martin Large, and that's the talk. Any questions? I will also be around, so I can answer all the questions about the monolith and all that stuff. And it will be super helpful if you will review the talk. It will help me a lot to improve in the next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>